Dr. Jeff Weitz now. He is the executive director of the Thrombosis and Arthrosclerosis Research Institute at McMaster University. Good morning, doctor. Glad you could be with us. Good morning. Okay, so we're hearing in some provinces the pause is due to supply in Ontario. It's out of an abundance of caution. Is this pause warranted? Well, I think if we put everything together in terms of supply issues, I think it's not unreasonable to pause the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. It was being restricted to older individuals, and most of the older individuals in Ontario have already been vaccinated. So it kind of makes sense now if the supplies of the other vaccines are available to switch to them. But I, I, I think that uh, making that switch because of this, these rare clotting events isn't very sensible. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I think we have to put these rare uh, clotting events into perspective. There are about four to seven of these rare clotting events per million individuals getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. And if we think about the rate of clotting events in the general population, in a million, we would expect at least a thousand clots. So this is four out of a million. And in the general population, we expect at least a thousand clots in a million individuals in the general population. And if you get COVID-19 out of a million people with COVID-19, we'd expect at least 100,000 with clots and maybe up to 200,000 with clots. So I think if you put it into perspective that way, the risk of clotting with the vaccine is exceedingly low. Lower than getting COVID? Lower than getting COVID, we, we know that the population is at risk. Uh, the number of cases is out of control in Ontario. And as we vaccinate more and more, we're seeing the caseload coming down. So getting the population vaccinated is the most important priority. And that's why the first vaccine that you can get is the best vaccine. But we've gone past that peak point now, and most of the older individuals are vaccinated. Now we're moving to the younger individuals. And if we have an abundant supply of the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, sure, we can move to those. Doctor, is the greatest risk of developing a clot after the first shot, or could you develop it after the second AstraZeneca shot? Uh, the, the greatest risk appears to be with the first uh, shot of the vaccine. This is an idiosyncratic reaction. It means there's no predicting these rare clotting events, and they, they are rare. And the mechanism is an immune mechanism where by the individual develops antibodies against a platelet protein. These are autoantibodies. They're antibodies against a protein in their own platelets. And that antibody then activates the platelets and promotes uh, clotting. And if someone develops, again, this very rare blood clot, can it be treated? Yes, it can. I, I think now that we have recognized this rare complication, we know that uh, these clots occur within the 5 to 28 days after vaccination. If you've passed that milestone, you won't get these rare clots. And the, the main way that we identify it is that people have clots often in unusual places like the veins that in the brain, the cerebral veins, or uh, the veins that drain blood from the liver or the spleen or the intestine, the mesenteric veins or the splenic or hepatic veins, or the usual vein, uh, clots in the deep veins of the leg or in the lung. But these clots are associated with a low platelet count, with thrombocytopenia, a low platelet count. Normally, when people get clots, they don't have a low platelet count. So the combination of recent vaccination with the AstraZeneca or possibly the Johnson & Johnson vaccine within the last uh, 28 days, clot and a low platelet count should trigger the thinking about this rare vaccine-induced immune uh, thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopenia or low platelet count. And then the treatment is two-pronged. With these types of clots, we want to tackle the antibodies against the platelets, and we do that 
by giving immunoglobulin intravenously to dilute out with normal immunoglobulin, normal antibodies, the, the offending antibody, mm -hmm. or we can use plasmapheresis or plasma exchange to take away the antibody from the plasma and give normal plasma or give prednisone, a steroid, to, to uh, suppress the antibody formation. And then we treat the blood clots with a blood thinning medication and we avoid the heparins and use non-heparin uh, blood thinning uh, medications, either injectable or oral agents, to treat the clot. So a little bit different in that we have to attack the antibodies as well as attenuate the, the clotting process to attack the clots. Yeah, but there are tools in the toolbox um, if someone develops, again, this rare clotting. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor. We really appreciate your time on this and trying to put things into perspective. There is a 